Uh, go back to, and I don't want to finish with this, go back to Ephesians one more time. I was going to read a little bit more. Just so you get the thought of what he's talking about. You know, we just got through reading about how um, uh, put off the old man and put on the new man. Let's just go on reading as Paul then explains, uh, that was in verses 22 to 24, in verses 25, Ephesians 4, 25, Paul then goes on to illustrate and explain just exactly what he means by that. In case his readers didn't get the thought that he's getting at when he says, put off the old man, put on the new man, verse 25 says, wherefore, or because of this, or in other words, here's what I mean, wherefore, Ephesians 4, 25, uh, wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor. For we are members one of another. Uh, be angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. I believe that means if you get angry, get over it. <laughs> don't hold on to it. Just let it go. Don't let the sun go down. In other words, don't hold on to it. I think that's what he means. Paul's here saying, look, I know sometimes we get angry, but get over it. That's what he's saying. Now, I've heard some people take the opposite position and say, that means we should hold on to something they call a godly anger. I don't see that myself. I don't think that's right. I think anger is not necessarily a good thing. Uh, you're not at your best when you're angry. So get over it. Uh, be, if you're angry, don't make it a sin. Let it go. Uh, verse 27. Neither give place to the devil. Boy, there's no, there's no way to give place to the devil better just being angry and, uh, and acting on it. Verse 28. Let him that stole steal no more, but let him labor, working with his hands the things that are good, that he may have to give to him that needeth. What's Paul doing here? He's illustrating, or he's giving you examples of what it means to put off the old man and put on the new man. This is the kind of things the new man does. He doesn't lie, he doesn't steal. He labors to give to other people uh, rather than stealing. Uh, verse 29, Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the edifying, uh, good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace to the hearers. He says, don't let what comes out of your mouth tear people down, but you have the capacity with what comes out of your mouth to build people up. Think about that. Think about the power that you have just in what you say to people. You can build, edify means to build up. You can, literally, you can, with what comes out of your mouth, minister grace to people that are around you. And you can build them up. Don't tear them down. He's saying, this is, he's illustrating putting off the old man, putting on the new man. <clears throat> Verse 30, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby we're sealed unto the day of redemption. Verse 31, Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor, he's just giving me quite a list here, and evil speaking, be put away from you. Oh yeah, and with all malice. <laughs> he throws that in. In other words, all these things, notice these are the things that are the big things there in Paul's mind when he talks about putting off the old man. These are the kind of things that are first and foremost. Things that have to do with our relationships with one another. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking, uh, let those things go. Just let them be put away. Those belong to the old. Those are like the grave clothes that Lazarus was bound with. Verse 32. Here, by contrast, here's what you should do. Be kind one to another, tender-hearted. Listen to this. Forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. He reminds us that God, because of Jesus, has forgiven us. So he says, because of that, forgive one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. Now, I've talked to people before who said to me, well, so-and-so did such and such to me, and I can't forgive him, and I won't forgive him, and I can't. <laughs> but I, and I'll read a verse like this to him. Well, I know it says that, but I can't. <laughs> I know that's in the Bible, but there's lots of things in the Bible. <laughs> I know it says that, but I can't. But Paul says we should. Uh, Jesus says we should forgive. Everybody knows that, but I can't. But you know, here's, here's what a person like that needs, and this is what I endeavor to do when somebody tells me that. Look at what it says again here. Forgiving one another, comma, even as, or in the same way that God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. In other words, what we do should reflect what He's done for us. So personally, and I agree, you know, sometimes people can really do one another wrong. And sometimes people can do you wrong and, you, and you're really hurt by it. And it's hard sometimes to do what the Bible says to do. But what we need, here's, what, here's the remedy for it. Forgive as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. Now a person like that who has a hard time forgiving, what they need is like uh, we sometimes say, mega doses of vitamins. You need mega doses of information about how God has forgiven you. 
megadoses of information about God's grace for you. And let me just tell you how God has freely forgiven you and how He's not holding anything against you. And everything that you've done, He's let it go. You know, Jesus told a parable about that one time, about the man who owed his master a tremendous amount of money, and he said, have mercy on me, and the master forgave him. And then he went out and found another fellow servant who just owed him a teeny little bit, and he took him by the neck and strangled him and said, you pay me what you owe me. Why you pay me what you owe me? And he said that man was turned over to tormentors. That man was tormented because he didn't... He, in other words, he was supposed to act like the master acted towards him. So what we really need... Uh, is megadoses of uh, information about God's uh, forgiveness towards us. How God has for Christ's sake forgiven us. God has for Christ's sake forgiven us. Did you know that God has for Christ's sake forgiven you? If you set your mind on that for a while, you know what? It becomes easy to forgive everybody else when you realize, wow, think about how freely He forgave me. He's not holding anything against me. You know, He has a right to, but He's not. He put everything wrong with me on Jesus, and Jesus took it away. And I've got nothing to be afraid of from God. See, that frees me to be able to forgive you for anything, you know. And I can't even remember anymore things that have happened in the past. I've got a happy life because I feel like I can remember what happened this morning, but after that, I don't know. <laughs> my life's uh, blank back there. I, I rely on my wife to remember what happened back there years ago. Okay, let's all stand up today. Jesus, give my power.